All right, what's in my stock market portfolio this week? So with the market having several losing days this week, it's all gonna be red. So first of all, I've got some Alibaba shares that I bought at 164, closing this week at 142, giving me a 12% loss on Alibaba. Doesn't pay any dividends, but it's got good potential capital gain whenever it decides to recover. I got Bank of Nova Scotia that I bought at 71.8, it actually broke the 70s yes, th this week. But it's a great bank stock paying 4.5% dividends right now. And I'm down to 2.5% 2 on that one. If it actually goes, maybe if it actually reaches 65 or something, I could, I will try to buy more of this stock for sure. Just a matter of having available cash. Got some dividend 15 split corp 2 that I bought some this week at $4 and I already had some at 6.69. So the average, the new average price is 4.5. So that's great. Definitely averaged down my 6.69 that I had, but I'm still down 16% or almost 17% on that stock because it closed the week at 3.74. I also got some dividend 15 split corp that I bought at 7.99, 7 closed at 8.53, so I'm up 6.5% on that one. I was actually up 16% last week. I could have sold and made 16% in three days, but I wanted to sell it at $10 and make about 25%. So now I'm, so now I'm down to 6% instead. But it's a stock that pays dividends every month, 10 cents per share. So at least while I'm waiting, I'll be collecting something and I'm confident that it's going to reach 10 when the market recovers. As soon as the market recovers, it's going to reach $10 because it's been trading at $10 forever. And then I'll, I'll, I'll probably sell. And if it doesn't, well, I'll just keep collecting dividends. Right now, with, this, with the purchase price, I'd be collecting, I'd be collecting around 15% dividends per year. I've got beautiful Ford here that I bought at $10. Closed, closed this week at 8.98, so almost 9. It actually reached it actually reached 8.07 .7 this week, so it was really, really bad. I'm down 10%. On the option side, that I, the ones that I bought at $1.50 closed at $0.75, cents, so I'm actually down 50% on that one. I got Facebook that I bought at, at 145.75 this week, closed at 145.37, so pretty, pretty neutral on this one. This is a stock actually on Thursday. I wanted to buy at 149, but I didn't have the money wasn't transferred to my trading account yet. So good, it's a good thing it wasn't because the next day it reached 145, it even reached the low, I think was 143. So if I had bought it at 149 and then watched the next day, the price reach 143, I would have been really pissed off. So sometimes it's good to wait. Don't force don't force things and um, so yeah so I, I bought some more Facebook at 145 GM that I bought at 34 a while back closed at 32.65 it's funny while everything went down GM and Ford went up it really doesn't make sense it's good to know that the market it's good to know that the reason the stocks are dropping or, or going up have nothing to do with the companies themselves it's all just general market so it just creates discounts because you know that it, once, the, once the general market recovers, these individual stocks are going to go back up and you will confirm a decent capital gain. I've got some Honda Motor that I bought at 29.3. It reached 26 this week. Would like to buy more of it, but just don't have enough cash to buy everything. But this one pays around 3.5% dividends and it's got good potential capital gain and it's a super strong stock, super strong company. Really not worried putting my money in that stock. L Brands playing around between 29 and 31, closing at 30.42. So I'm down only 3% on that one. Looks like it's gonna break next week. At least I'm getting 8% dividends per year while I'm holding it. But I would like to sell it and buy something else. And I've got Vodafone, which is pretty bad. I should be buying more of this because I'm down 18% on Vodafone and it pays 8% dividends per year, but it only pays it twice a year. But like I said, there's just too many things to buy and not enough cash. <laughs> Regardless, so I bought at 22.87, closed at 18.62 and I'm down 18.5% on Vodafone. 
We've got some more Ford here that I bought at 10.95, closing at 8.98, I'm down 18%. So as you can see, I'm really, I'm down double digits on almost everything. Ford options that I bought at a dollar, closing at 75 cents, I'm down 25%. So this one's creeping back up, it's getting close to the price I bought it at. As soon as it reaches the price that I bought it at, I'm probably gonna get out because I have like 14 months for this stock to reach 11.87 or sorry, 10.87, and I, I don't like that stress. I've got Facebook here that I bought initially at 168, closing at 145.37, I'm down 13% on that one, and I've got AT&T that dropped hard this week because of earnings, so I bought at 32 a, a while back, at least three months ago I bought it at 32, closing at 29.09, so I'm down 9% on, on that stock, but it's also a dividend paying stock. So I've got Ford and AT&T that pay stocks in, in my TFSN and in my RSP. I've got Bank of Nova Scotia. I've got DFN.to. DF sometimes potentially is going to pay dividends. I've got Ford again that pays dividends. I've got GM, HMC, L Brands, and Vodafone that pay, they all pay dividends. So most of my stocks pay dividends. So I'm not really worried about the 12 or 18% loss or paper loss that my positions are representing, but because eventually they're gonna go back up and while I'm holding on to these stocks, I'm collecting dividends anyways. My investment is generating a return regardless of the price of the stock. So nothing new in my inve in invest on the investor's edge side. Same old Bank of Nova Scotia. This one I bought at 76, closing at 70. Got Barclays that I bought at nine. I think it closed at around 8.6. Dollarama I bought at 40.75, closing at 39 and Enbridge closing at 40.96. I bought it around 46 or 48. So this is actually a good stock to buy even at this price because it pays around 7% dividends per year and it's got good potential capital gain. And I think it's like the fourth biggest market cap on the Canadian Stock Exchange. So Enbridge is definitely a stock to watch, especially at this price. I don't know why it doesn't want to break. I think it went all the way up to 47 or even 48, but then it dropped back down to 40. But definitely a good stock for those who haven't bought Enbridge. Definitely a good stock to watch. On the TFSA side, I've got Synovus Energy. Pretty bad. This is a really bad trade. I bought at 15, closing at 11, and I bought this over a year. It's probably going to be hitting two years soon. I've got some DFN, DF.TO that I bought at 5.17. I don't think I'm going to buy any more of this stock because I've put enough in it. I bought once at 6.69, once at 5.17, and another time at 4. And plus it doesn't pay dividends yet, or at least it's not consistent in paying the dividends. But once it does, I'm going to be getting a very good yield. So Enbridge also, once again, closing at 40.96, bought it at an average price of 46 in, in this account. Hudson, Hudson's Bay bought it at 13 closing at 8.72, don't want even, terrible, terrible decision. G, GE General Electric, also very bad choice. I bought it at 17, closing at 11.3, but they're announcing earnings next week, so there should be some movement, and most likely it's gonna be positive movement. But I'm getting dividends on this talk. Kraft Heinz also, I bought a bit too high, I bought it at 75, closing at 54, pays some dividends as well. New York Mortgage Trust, New York Mortgage Trust pays around 13% dividends. I just received some dividends on Friday, about $64, which I receive every three, uh, three months. So that's good. So this is a stock that I'm, I bought at an average price of six and I'm holding and it doesn't, doesn't move much, but I'm holding pretty much keeping it long term for the 13% dividends. And orange that I bought at 15.75, it, it actually went past 16 this week but then closed on Friday at 15.54 and pays about 8% dividends as well. So definitely want to buy some more stocks. What I'm looking at next week is probably DFN.TO if it drops below 8 considerably would probably con buy DFN.TO because it's consistent in the dividends. Right now I really want something that pays dividends because I don't know what the lowest point is anymore. I sort of want to protect myself against buying a stock that continues to drop because I won't be it'll be it'll be considered dead money because I'll have to wait very long for the for the stock to recover in order to make a capital gain for example on Facebook or or Alibaba so these stocks don't pay dividends so I have to wait until they recover 
But if I buy a stock that pays dividends, even if it drops a bit, I'm still, I'm still collecting something off the stock. So I'm looking at DFN.to. I already bought some at eight. So if, if I buy more of it, it'll be around seven or 7.25. Uh, looking, at, looking at Pizza Pizza Royalty pays 10 per, almost 10% dividends as well. Trading at a 52 week low, even trading at an eight year low. So, so capital gain wise, it looks good and dividends, it looks good. Don't know why it's dropping though, but definitely confident that it's not a stock. It's not a stock that's going to disappear or go bankrupt the next day. Also watching the bank stocks, Bank of Nova Scotia, if it reaches 65, I would buy some more of. So I'll keep you posted next week on what I'll buy. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below. Any video ideas also, leave in the comments below. Like always, if you're going to open an account with Questrade, use my referral code in the description below the video so you can get between $25 and $250 back. Thanks for watching.